Good evening. I'm Trudy Morata, a volunteer community ambassador with AARP Virginia. And I wanna welcome you to our six pillars of brain health webinar this evening. And thank you all for joining us. This program is scheduled for about 80 minutes, although we may finish a bit early. Experts tell us that regardless of our age, we can reduce the chance of age-related diseases and optimize our chance of maintaining cognitive health. Throughout our lifespan, our brain is constantly changing and can make new nerve cells. The best part is that we can do a lot to take charge of our brain health and improve our quality of life. So we applaud you for deciding to spend time with us this evening to learn about and share lifestyle behaviors that support brain health. Based on current brain research vetted for you by AARP's Global Council on Brain Health, our work for staying sharp, we've identified six pillars of a brain healthy lifestyle. In the reminder email for tonight's program, we included a link to download the slide presentation and a link to the resources page listing all the websites that we'll share with you this evening. And now onto the program. I have assisting me this evening, Opal Elliott, who is also an AARP volunteer community ambassador. And I'm thrilled to be joined tonight by Dr. Rebecca Daly. Like me, Rebecca is also an AARP volunteer community ambassador, and we're very fortunate to have her on our team. Rebecca is currently overseeing the Outpatient Vascular Surgery Center for Innova Health System as a nurse manager. Rebecca attended the University of Kentucky for both her undergraduate Bachelor of Science in Nursing degree and her Doctor of Nursing Administration in Population and Organizational Systems Leadership. Rebecca is a fearless advocate. She has a passion about helping others see their potential, lessening healthcare disparities in her community, and promoting healthy lifestyles for all. When she isn't riding her Peloton bike or at the gym, Rebecca loves to travel and learn about different cultures. Rebecca voluntarily conducts brain health seminars on behalf of AARP, and her role here this evening is to provide general guidance, not specific medical advice or recommendations. But hopefully the information we cover and the resources we share with you will help you make informed decisions to take charge of your brain health. So with that, please give a warm welcome to Rebecca Daly. Thank you so much, Trudy. Um, and thank you um, to Opal as well as they're gonna be my co-host this evening. So we look forward to um, facilitating tonight's conversation about brain health. Again, this will be an interactive um, presentation. So be sure to, I see some people had already commented in the chat box, but we will be using that and Trudy and Opal will help me facilitate that as we move through. So let's jump right in. We wanna start with a short, short disclaimer that again, as Trudy mentioned, this session is intended to be informational and educational and does not constitute medical advice, diagnoses or treatment. You should always seek the advice of a physician or other qualified healthcare provider regarding your personal health and before beginning or changing any treatment, activity, program, or dietary plan. AARP is not responsible for any decisions or actions taken in reliance upon or as a result of the information provided during the event. I am a nurse, but I am not a medical expert or neurosurgeon, and I cannot provide specific advice or recommendations. The information we cover today is intended to help people make informed decisions on how to lead a lifestyle that supports brain health. So let's start with some good news. Until recently, the prevailing scientific wisdom held that the human brain was pretty much fixed early in life. Experts believed that at birth, our brains had all the cells that we were ever gonna have. Again, I'm not a neuroscientist, 
So I'm not going to go through the structure of the brain or how it operates tonight. But what I what I want to share with you today is based on research. And the good news is that regardless of age, our brain is constantly changing and can make new nerve cells. The best part is that we can do a lot to take charge of our brain health and improve our quality of life. Experts say that only about 30 percent of physical aging can be traced to our genes and the rest is up to us. So this evening's presentation is based on current brain research vetted for you by AARP's Global Council on Brain Health and our work for AARP's online Stain Sharp program. We've identified six pillars of a lifestyle that supports brain health, and they are engage your brain or learn new things, stay socially engaged or be social, manage stress, address the mental and physical effects of stress, exercise or be physically active, sleep better to enjoy the restorative benefits, and eat right. Healthy food choices can contribute and support your brain health. So there are significant trends today that make it particularly important to live a lifestyle that supports brain health. As people are living longer, the risk for cognitive decline increases. And so we want to be in good health to enjoy these extra years and the experiences we find in them. An important trend is that people are rethinking retirement and redefining the whole notion of traditional retirement. Many people will decide to continue their careers or start new ones, either because they want to or because they must for economic reasons. Since we are living longer, the prospect of skyrocketing healthcare costs gives us additional incentive to live as healthy as we can for as long as we can. And finally, current brain research shows that a brain healthy lifestyle can optimize our chance of maintaining cognitive health. So we'll jump right into our first pillar, which is engage your brain. But you don't have to earn a degree to get the benefits of discovering and learning new things. Studies have shown the positive effects of challenging the brain in new ways throughout your life. Our brain is stimulated and makes new connections when we learn new things or pursue new interest. So what do we want to do? We want to stay curious and give yourself a good mental workout by doing something that challenges your thinking, offers you enjoyment, and encourages you to grapple with new and complex ideas. So we want to hear from you in the chat. What are some ways that you are learning new things and supporting your brain health? Hi, Bob says he loves to read the newspaper. And Trudy tells us that she learns a new language or refresh your knowledge of a language. Great. Awesome. Those are great. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is taking classes online. Uh, Chris says he started keeping bees. Wow, keeping bees, learning Spanish. Bob is also learning Spanish, wonderful. Absolutely, those are great ideas. Thank you for sharing. I'm gonna go over just a few that we may not have um, included. We've touched on a few from our guests, but they can be teaching or taking a class, as we mentioned, learning a new language or dancing, playing a musical instrument, doing complex arts and crafts, reading a challenging book or exploring a topic that is novel, playing a challenging card or board game, and writing letters. So we'll jump into our second pillar, and that is to be social. Stay socially engaged. Studies suggest that people who have good social networks live longer and are physically and mentally healthier than people who are socially isolated. Connecting with other people is stimulating and challenging and often adds meaning and purpose to our lives. In fact, experts say social connectedness is a key predictor of health and independence in later years. So stay engaged with friends, family, and community. In 2020, a study called Loneliness and Social Isolation Linked to Serious Health Conditions the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine 
found that there are health risks associated with loneliness. A quite serious one is that social isolation was associated with about a 50% increased risk of dementia. And as we know in this challenging time with the national pandemic, it can be hard to be social. So before I give you a few tips, we would like to hear from you again. What are some ways you are staying socially engaged these days? One person, Brian says he takes salsa things, that dancing classes from uh, the rec center in his area. Calling or writing old friends, that's great. We've, some of us have connected with old friends in the last year. Volunteering mm -hmm. with AARP, that is a great way to stay connected. Great Walking one. with the buddy and taking <laughs> a class, active in church groups, great ideas. Absolutely, thank you for sharing those. So again, just to name a few that we may not have mentioned, organizing a regular virtual game night or book club. Again, as we know, um, a lot of things have moved virtually. It's a, kind of our new normal, uh, but being able to connect with friends and loved ones near or far has been great opportunity for us. Attending virtual community events, consider adopting a pet or pet sitting for family and friends can always be great. And volunteering, as someone did mention, is another great way to stay connected. There are even opportunities available to do so remotely, such as what I'm doing here today with you. But AARP also can help with stay connected with free resources that may be interested in exploring. To find volunteer resources, check out AARP's Create the Good or CTG site. You can even explore opportunities you can do from home by visiting aarp.org forward slash virtual volunteering. The main homepage for CTG can be found at aarp.org forward slash CTG. Another way to stay connected is to check the AARP Virtual Community Center, where you can explore a wide ranging variety of online interactive events and classes and just fun. Visit AARP's Virtual Community Center at aarp.org forward slash V as in Victor CC. And finally, if you or someone you love is feeling isolated or anxious in these challenging times, hearing a friendly voice on the phone may help. You can request a call from AARP's Friendly Voices program by dialing AARP at 1-888-281-0145 for English or 1-888-497-4108 for Spanish between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. local time. So now we're moving to our third pillar and that is managing stress. Managing stress includes a number of things. Regular exercise relieves the mental and physical effects of stress. That's something I do and love to do. Smiling and laughing also releases hormones and brain chemicals to balance the effects of stress. Distracting yourself with music or reading can shift you away from repetitively going over the same issues or problems. And seek out green spaces. Spend time outdoors, if possible, to regularly appreciate and enjoy nature. So I want to hear from you again. What do you do to manage your stress? Morning walks and yoga, practicing mindfulness, a vegetable garden. Linda tells us she has a vegetable garden. Oh, nice. Turn the music up and dance. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and exercise with AARP, Bible study, forest bathing, meeting their trainer every week. Absolutely. Those are all great ideas. Thank you again for sharing and engaging with me tonight. So again, here we had some great options, but to give you a few more, um, you can confide in friends. Be silent and still quiets the mind. It is a skill that can be learned through meditation, as simple as sitting quietly and counting your breaths. And there are different apps and things that you can used to kind of help you stop and calm down. Tai Chi, an ancient slow moving exercise and yoga techniques is great as well. Take 
stretched breaks. So limit your screen time. Give your mind regular moments of rest. And as well as taking deep breaths. When practiced regularly can be calming and the extra dose of oxygen is good for the brain. Moving into our fourth pillar, which is ongoing exercise. This does not mean you have to become a marathon runner or ride your Peloton like I do every day. You just need to move more. So experts recommend you get at least 150 minutes of exercise each week. Move about 30 minutes on most days. Walking is a great start, but it doesn't have to be an be all endurance exercise. Build strength training, flexibility, and balance into your program. Beyond the physical exercise, beyond the physical, exercise has many benefits. It is good for your brain, heart, and reduces stress. Research suggests that being physically active helps repair and protect brain chemicals, increase circulation, reduce anxiety, improve sleep, and reduce the risk of diabetes, heart disease, depression, and stroke. So find activities you enjoy. It's almost important, it's also important to remember to talk to a healthcare provider before you start a new exercise program as we previously discussed. So again, let's hear from you. What are some ways you're moving and getting active? Someone's bought a standing desk, Bob. That's great. Great. Mm -hmm. yoga walking daily walk someone walks every morning and they watch movies on the treadmill stretching and walking tai chi and walking great walking seems to be a theme walking their dogs absolutely mm -hmm. Yes, and as we said, those are great starts. And so you've got a lot of information I'm already giving you, which is great. I love to hear it. As we said, walking, taking regular walks. Um, you also want to build endurance with moderate intensity aerobic exercises like dancing, running, or biking. I remember someone previously said they were learning to salsa. You can get into strength training two or more days a week to tone and strengthen your muscles. Um, and as you can see on the slide here, we have a member who has some light weights, but again, you can do this in your home with canned goods or things that you have around the house with you don't have to go out to a gym and have a gym membership as well. And you also want to work on your balance, flexibility, and strength. And you can do those through things such as Tai Chi or yoga, which are great opportunities. Moving into our fifth pillar, which is restorative sleep. Sleep restores the brain. And it is vital to support your brain health, including cognitive function. It is essential to overall mental and physical health. Some things you can do for a good night's sleep include avoiding caffeine beginning after lunch. And if you've not yet stopped smoking, avoid any smoking and nicotine substances four to six hours before bed. So before I give you any more ideas, again, we want to hear from you first and see what you may be doing. Drinking sleepy time tea. I used to do that. Yeah, that really, I think it has chamomile in it. So it helps mm -hmm. with calming noise machines, like that rainfall, like that uh, app calm. Mm -hmm. Use the calm app. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keeping my room cool, right. Mm -hmm. And put my phone down across the room. Good advice. Reading the Bible. All right. Absolutely. Those are great. Thank you so much for sharing. So start, we wanna make sure we're getting enough sleep each night, okay? So adults typically need six to eight hours in a 24 hour pre period. So what we wanna ensure is that you practice good sleep techniques. People at any age can change their behavior in ways that may improve their sleep. Recommendations include maintaining a regular sleep-wake schedule. So you get up at the same time every day, seven days a week, which can be hard. I know some of us like to sleep in on the weekends, but that can be beneficial. Also, listen to your body. You can also go to bed earlier and adopt an earlier sleep schedule. Expose yourself to light during the day and reduce exposure to light prior to sleep. 
So as someone said, avoiding TV and other electronics, those blue lights will keep you up throughout the night. There are changes to sleep as people age as well. A person who is 50 should not expect to sleep like they did at age 25. You may have to put more effort to get the restorative benefits of sleep. Sleep is more easily interrupted as you age as well. Deep sleep decreases between the age of 30 to 60. The body's internal clock shifts as well. Thus, older people tend to get sleepier early in the evening and staying up late becomes more difficult. They also start to awaken earlier in the morning. For example, you may get sleepy around eight to nine, go to sleep, sleep your seven to eight hours and wake up four or 5 a.m. These changes are normal parts of aging and do not mean that a person's sleep quality is worse or that the person necessarily has insomnia or another sleep disorder. It just means the timing of your sleep has shifted. Don't worry too much about an occasional bad night's sleep, but we do want you to consult with your provider if your life is being negatively impacted by chronic lack of sleep. And so in case we missed anything, to go back over a few things that you can do to ensure you have better sleep to get the restorative benefits of sleep. So adjusting your caffeine intake beginning after lunch, we wanna avoid caffeine. Keep pets and disturb that disturb you out of the bedroom, which can be hard. We love our furry friends sometimes, but they can wake us during the evenings. Restrict fluids and food three hours before going to bed. Keep your room cool. I know somebody mentioned that in our chat before. And then keep smartphones, TVs, and electronics out of the bedroom to reduce light exposure prior to sleep. And now we're going to roll right into our sixth pillar, which is eating right. What you eat also has a big impact on your brain. Although no specific diet has been proven to maintain or improve brain health, studies have found that certain eating plans help cognition. So examples of these healthy eating plans include the Mediterranean diet, DASH diet, which is dietary approaches to stop hypertensive, hypertension diet, the MIND diet, which is more of a hybrid between the two. MIND stands for Mediterranean DASH intervention for neurodegenerative delay. Evidence supports for better brain health. You should do the following. Consume more fish, nuts, beans, grains, leafy green vegetables, healthy fats, such as olive oil. And you also wanna eat less meat and fewer sweets. In general, the field of diet and brain health is relatively new. Gaps still exist in our knowledge of the effects of nutrients on brain health, and more research is needed in this realm. So again, we wanna hear from you. What are some foods that you eat as part of your brain healthy diet? I eat beets, says Bob, avoiding processed foods, more fruits and vegetables, Trudy says. Okay, awesome. salads, Donna, green foods. Great, wonderful. Absolutely, and thank you for sharing. So again, we named off some great examples, but here are a few more in case we missed any. As we said, eating more fish, for example, salmon and sardines. Um, don't forget your nuts like walnuts and almonds. Your leafy green vegetables um, like kale, spinach, and broccoli. Eating whole berries, fresh, frozen, or, or canned are all okay as well as using vinegar, lemon, herbs, and spices for flavor instead of too much salt or sugar, okay? And so our talk today would not be complete without listing some of the risks or threats to brain health as well. So we wanna look, we're gonna start with smoking. Smoking increases the risk of heart attack and stroke. And then we'll move to the right, depression. Depression doubles the risk for cognitive decline. Depression is not a normal part of aging. Seek treatment if you are having symptoms. Certain medications. 
Certain medications such as antihistamines, sleep aids, and some antidepressants have been shown to increase the risk of dementia. Tell your healthcare provider about the medications you're taking, including over-the-counter products to rule out potential problems. Diabetes. Diabetes damages blood vessels throughout the body, including your brain. It also increases the risk of heart disease, memory problems, and Alzheimer's disease. Hearing and vision loss. Hearing and vision loss are linked to trouble with thinking and memory. Think of your eyes and ears as sensory extensions of your brain. See a healthcare provider if you're experiencing hearing loss or vision impairment. And heart disease. It increases the risk of heart attack and stroke. So it's normal for your memory to not be as good as you age, but you can do things to help improve your memory. You can do things such as establishing a routine. Put everyday items in the same place so they're easier to find. Hang your keys in the same place, put your glasses in the same spot, etc. Anytime I don't put my keys on the hook where they're supposed to go, I tell myself, you're going to remember they're on the counter. And I always forget they're on the counter. Other tips would be pay attention. Pay attention to the information you want to remember. It sounds like common sense, but concentration is key. Practice self-talk to maintain focus. Say, I'm going to check the dryer repeatedly while you walk towards the laundry room. Then you won't get distracted by the lint on the carpet and, and instead go to the closet to get out the vacuum. You might later think you forgot about the clothes in the dryer, but you just lost focus. Practice self-talk. Avoid multitasking. It is far better to focus on one thing at a time. And again, use that self-talk. You can also write down your list of things to do, check it off often, and stick to it. You also should take breaks. Tension and stress are associated with memory lapses. Managing stress can help improve that memory. And lastly, use calendars, reminders, and alarms. The mind is for having ideas, not holding them all. Clear the mind. Use calendars, reminders, and alarm to assist. So what would a day filled with brain healthy behaviors look like for you? So we want to get you engaged again and tell us some things that it would look like for you. Well, one person has said they're going to practice self-talk so they can stay focused. When I wake up, I get up. Somebody said they're going to try to go to bed on time. Bob mm -hmm. has told us, that he, and Trudy says when she wakes up, she does get up, right? So she doesn't linger there. She gets up and gets going, and we know that. <laughs> Absolutely. Those are great. And like I said, I really like the self-talk as well. Um, to remind myself throughout the day, additionally, for things such as positive affirmations that remind me that, you know, I can get through the day. When you're feeling stressed, as we talked about before, ways to manage your stress, telling yourself, I can do this. Um, you might be moving a little bit slower today, but you're going to make it through your day. So again, those are great. Different things you can do upon walking in the morning, as we talked about before, taking a brisk walk or doing it at home exercise or meditating in the morning, um, even early afternoon, thinking of things you can implement throughout your day. So in the afternoon, you can get together virtually um, with your friends, you can chat on the phone, take adult education classes, and then even down to dinner, as we talked about, focusing on what types of food you're eating and the evening hours, maybe reading a book, organizing your day for tomorrow. Prepping is always great. And doing some stretches before you go to bed um, to ensure that you're getting that full seven to eight hours of sleep to get the restorative benefits. And so in conclusion, as we talked about what you can do today, aging studies consistently point to a few fundamental qualities of a brain healthy lifestyle. The overall message is to stay active mentally, physically, and socially with special attention to a healthy diet, good sleep, and stress reduction. 
start with small steps and try to do something every day. So if you can think of what is one thing that you're going to do every day, feel free to share into the chat now that you're going to start today. One person says they're going to make lunch at breakfast so it will be ready and I won't eat drunk. Morning walk. That's so important. Another person said uh, positive self-talk. Fruit mm -hmm. for snacks. Write down what needs to be done and the time it needs to be done. Morning and evening stretching. Stretching is so important. Absolutely. Those are great. Thank you. I would say one thing that I started recently, I just started on Monday, again, planning for the day ahead. Um, my breakfast, I make overnight oats. And it's been great. I normally would eat oatmeal when I get to work, but still sometimes if I didn't have time to make it, I would be behind. So I said, let me start this week overnight oats. I just grab my mason jar out of the refrigerator and I'm good to go for the morning. So again, we want to make those small first steps, whether it's taking a 10 minute walk, adding one serving of vegetables and fruits, as we discussed, or making an appointment for your health screenings or physical exams, write those down. Um, and what you will do and when. And also get support from family, friends, or community groups. In regards to getting support, I wanna show you some resources before we leave. So again, thank you for joining us today. I encourage you to incorporate the six pillars into your daily life. I wanna be sure to mention these resources um, to continue your learning on this topic. These links are also in your handout. So I'm gonna give you a lot of information, but do not feel as if you're scribbling quickly. They're all in your handout. So you have AARP Brain Health. Um, you can find the latest news on brain health. Also, Staying Sharp. Staying Sharp, included with AARP membership, is an online brain health program that focuses on the six pillars and includes brain health challenges, articles, activities, recipes, videos, fun, games, and more. Plus, for an additional one-time free fee, you can take a brain health assessment and receive personalized recommendations. For more information, go to stainsharp.aarp.org. The Global Council on Brain Health, which is GCBH, is a collaborative from AARP. The GCBH inspires thought leaders to work together to translate critical scientific information on brain health into simple actions people can take every day, such as the information we've shared with you tonight. The GCBH is dedicated to improving people's understanding of the steps they can take to improve their brain health throughout their lives. Brain health is vital to well-being across the lifespan, so the GCBH's work aims to have a major impact. Also, there's a book called Keep Sharp, Build a Better Brain at Any Age by a neuro neurosurgeon and CNN chief medical correspondent Sanjay Gupta. Keep Sharp is an AARP supported book based in part on the work of the Global Council on Brain Health, which offers science-driven guidance for brain health. Keep Sharp also offers guidance on brain diseases. It is available from aarp.org forward slash keep sharp and wherever books are sold. There are also many other helpful resources listed in your handout. So I encourage you to check them out. If you're interested, if you're registered for this program through AARP using your email address and you've opted to receive emails from AARP, AARP will send you a research questionnaire in about two weeks, which will ask about your experiences since you attended this presentation. Please be on the lookout for an email from AARP containing a link to the survey. Again, this will be in about two weeks. The subject line will begin with today's date and read October 12th, 2021, AARP Brain Health Workshop, short research survey. Completing the research questionnaire is voluntary and confidential. AARP would greatly appreciate if you filled it out. And this will help us know the effectiveness of this program. Please know that we welcome your feedback on our session today and appreciate you taking a few moments to complete our participant survey as well. 
Over to you, Trudy. Or <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Another great job, Rebecca. Rebecca, thank you. Opal, thank you for assisting me this, this evening and this afternoon. On behalf of AARP, I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight. As we mentioned earlier, you will receive a follow-up email that will have the link to all of the resources that we shared here tonight. Um, so that should be very helpful to you. We'd love to get your feedback on our program. So in the chat box, you'll see a link to a survey. Click on that link, take a few moments to share your feedback with us on this program, or perhaps programs you'd like to see us offer in the future. We will also send this link in a follow-up email. Thank you again for joining us. If you enjoyed today's program, please check out our upcoming events at aarp.org virtual VA that's in the chat box for you as well. Until next time, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay active, and to lead a brain healthy lifestyle. Thanks for joining us this evening. Good night. Thank you.